Hey everybody, Neil Malik from Knack Training here, bringing you another everyday office video. And in today's video, I want to illustrate how I created the chart you see on your screen right here, which was in response to a question that was posed on Reddit. So this is a, a very typical impression of how we look at stock prices. Over the last 52 weeks, over the last year, we want to know where the low end of the price was, where the high end of the price was, and where our current price fits in that scale. So you can see here that I've got $240 being the bottom end of the scale, $597 being at the top end of the scale, and $328 is a lot closer to $240 than it is to $600. So it's right here on the sliding scale. Now how did I make this? Well the answer comes down to the following basic principles. Item number one is that we can create a stacked bar chart where part of the stacked bar chart is just there for our marker, that blue marker right there. Item number two is that when we create charts, the labels of those charts don't actually have to come from the numbers that are in the table that we base it off of. And item number three is that we can move our labeling around as we need to. So let me go ahead and illustrate this on my example sheet right here. So again, you see here that we have a current price of 217, which falls somewhere between 143 and 322. I'm not using this table. I'm going to use a secondary table that's based on these numbers, because what I need is for $143.53 to be seen as zero basically, the, the bottom end of my chart. I need there to be a marker wherever 217 is away from that, and then a final end of the chart wherever 322 is away from that. So what we need to do is we need to start off with the question of how far is 217 away from 143, because now we're going to treat $143 as if it's zero. So right over here, we put our base, and our base is whatever difference there is between 217 and 143, which is $74.01, okay? Now we need a marker, and the size of the marker is, you know, it's that little blue slider thing that I created right here. This represents 5% of whatever the size is. So it's up to you whether 5% is big enough or 10% is big enough, those sorts of things. I'm going to put the marker in this example as, uh, let's call it 10% of whatever the base is. So I'll do equal sign and then select the base and then multiply it by 0.1. All right, so the marker here is 7.4 in size. So that's the bottom end of the slider. It's the blue part of the slider, and now we need the top end of the slider. So the top end of the slider is just really what, whatever's left over, right? So what we need here is we need the end, right? And the end of the slider is uh, however much $322.19 is away from the low price minus whatever we've already taken into account. So we do equal sign $322.19 minus the original low price, but we don't need the parts of the bar filled in where we already have the base, so we subtract the base and we also subtract the marker. And so what's left over there is the $97.25. So if we think of a difference between $143.53 and $217.54, that's $74.01. Then we had to make an arbitrary marker on that. So we just took 10% of that and said that's the size of our marker. So if we already have all the way up to $143.53, and then we already have $74.01, and then we already have $7.40, then to finally get all the way to the high price is just whatever's left over, that $97.25. So now this is what we make the chart out of. So we go up here to insert at the top of the screen, we add a 2D chart, but it's a bar chart and it's stacked. 
So I'm going to go with my 2D stacked bar chart right here. And at this point, it breaks them into three separate bars. I don't want that to happen. So I click on my chart and choose switch rows and columns there. And that's what we're looking for right there. Now let's take off all the unnecessary elements. I'm just clicking on bars and labels and titles and things and just using the delete key to get rid of absolutely every one of those things. Now if we think about it, right, this is from $143.53 to $217.54, the rest of the way to $322.19. That looks right, right? Now let's go ahead and colorize this so it feels like a nice slider where we're be, uh, being pinpointed where we want to look. Uh, I click on the first part of the bar, hit Control-1 on my keyboard to bring up the formatting tools, and I will choose to fill this with like a soft gray color, something along those lines, yeah, maybe a little softer than that. And then click on the other part of the bar, use the F4 key on the keyboard to repeat that same colorization, and then click on my slider here and just make it pop, so I'm going to go with something like a, a bright blue or something like that. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add my data labels because you can see that I've got the bar and I've got the slider. That all feels good. That feels like we've got it taken care of. If we wanted to really make this stand out even further, we could even go to the border area here for just that segment of the bar and add the same bright blue color as a border that went around the outside edges. And so that slider could really kind of fill up the space a little bit. So there's, there's different things we can do there. So now we need data labels. We need a data label telling us what the bottom end of this is. We need a data label telling us what the top end of this is and then where the marker is. So I'm gonna click on the bottom end, go up here to add chart element and add a data label. And it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go ahead and put mine inside the base right there. But you can see that this numeric value is wrong. The low price is not $74.01. The low price is $143.53. So how do we change that? What we do is we click on this label, hit Control-1 on our keyboard, and right over here on the right, you see how we can now make our label say not what the value is, not the $74.01, but the value from basically any cell we want. So I'm gonna go here to Value from Cells, and I'm going to highlight $143.53 and hit OK. And now I can just take out the value and leave the value from that cell. And just go ahead and put that right over there on the left. And now I'll just repeat, right? Click on the blue slider in the middle, add the data label to the blue slider. Centered is fine. Again, it says that the value is $7.40. That's not what I want. I go over here to the right, click on my little chart icon so I get to my label options, choose a value from a cell, and say, give me the current price in that spot, and take off the current value, and then slide it down a little bit, like so, and maybe even come in here and change the font color so it really pops and matches with the slider. And then finally, click on the other end, go in here to chart design, add myself another data label. This time the inside end seems fine. Click on the data label uh, and go over here to the chart icon, value from cells, and choose the current high price. Hit OK. Remove the existing value from there and then slide it around and put it wherever makes you happy. Now we're doing very well with this chart, but the problem is that you know, we've gone all this way, we've got a chart that looks great, but unfortunately we have data on our sheet right now that uh, kind of distracts because this is just being used for the chart. It has no real value to anybody else. So what we do is we click on the chart and we go up here to the select data button at the top of the screen and we click on this button here that says hidden and empty cells because by default in Excel if a cell is hidden it doesn't show up in your chart. See this right here? I'm going to click the checkbox that says show the data in the hidden cells. Hit OK and hit OK and now I can very quickly and easily right click on these columns and hide them 
and it will not affect the functionality of my existing chart. And there it is. So I have my chart that represents the data and I have all the things that are happening in the background, but we don't have to worry about those because they're hidden.